YouTube and welcome to this episode of the Godzilla Vlogs where we talk about anything and everything Godzilla. I'm going to keep my voice a little bit lower than normal just because of the time I'm recording this. It's very late at night. So today we're going to talk about something, actually a video that I've wanted to do for a while and the Godzilla Vlogs, I didn't even realize I could do this through the Godzilla Vlogs because you know, I'm dumb. It is like a million degrees in here, and it's December 1st. This is ridiculous. It shows you when this video was actually recorded. Um, and that is the unsung hero of Godzilla. And I don't just mean, you know, Showa era, or Heisei era, or Millennium era. I mean Godzilla, the entire shit and caboodle. Um, and that man, without a shadow of a doubt, the unsung hero of all of Godzilla, is none other than Jun Fukuda. And of course, Jun Fukuda is a man mainly known for his entries in the Godzilla film franchise, and rightfully so. Those are the movies that genuinely got a large release here in the West. And that's Godzilla vs. the Sea Monster, Son of Godzilla, Godzilla vs. Gigan, Godzilla vs. Megalon, and finally Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla, which in my opinion is his best work. Um, it's a pretty big chunk of films. Um, you know, and he's done a lot more than just that. Um, he's done several different genres and so on and so forth, and all of these Godzilla films are just f fun romps of both camp, badassery, and even creativity, especially his 70s movies, even Megalon. They're just amazing. They're, they're fun films. Um, definitely, they fit their era. And Jun Fukuda has done a lot of other films, too. A lot of people don't know this. Jun Fukuda has done many other types of films as well. He's done, for example, Secret of the Telegian Man, which I've actually reviewed for. Plug, plug, go and listen to it. It's actually one of my favorite reviews um, that I've done. It is an amazing film. It is, it is just a really good, solid tokusatsu film that's fun. It's not campy. It is fun um, and, and extremely well written. In my opinion, Shinichi Sekizawa's one of his best scripts. But he's also done a lesser known tokusatsu film known as The War in Space, which is a giant piece of shit. That was made in 1977, the true last basic hurrah of, you know, the Showa era tokusatsu films. And it's a piece of shit, but man, is it so much fun because of how bad it is. It's kind of like Godzilla vs. Megalon, except on a more badass level. Yeah, it's a shit ton of fun. But he's also made many spy thrillers full of comedy. He's very good at kind of blending those genres. I've actually seen a few of them, on, and I have a few of them on my computer. Um, I haven't seen most of them. I've seen a couple of them. But many of these star Akira Takarada as the main character. And these are spy thrillers that are also comedies at the same time. So they're pretty fun to watch. They kind of remind me of... Um, 70s James Bond, like the, the early James Bond, Roger Moore, Live and Let Die, and Man with the Golden Gun. Those two movies are extremely fun. And those movies, directed by Jun Fukuda and Sergei Kira Takarada, remind me greatly of that. But he made fun movies that make not just me, but many other people who love the Godzilla series in general smile. The movies that make us feel good, the movies that make us laugh and have fun you know, that a lot of movies lack now. That's a sharp contrast to many of the Shiro Honda films, uh, which they were usually a lot darker, where he worked a lot with Takashi Kimura. Um, Jun Fukuda worked with several other people, specifically Shinichi Sekizawa. Um, they were much darker, though perhaps they were deeper. They had deeper meanings, the Shiro Honda films and the Jun Fukuda movies did. And Jun Fukuda had usually fantastic fantastic human characters that were usually fun. Maybe not truly three-dimensional, but a ridiculous amount of fun. And what he would tend to do was throw these ordinary people and throw them into extraordinary situations. Examples, let's look at this. The bank robber from Godzilla vs. the Sea Monster, a man who simply wants to find his brother from Godzilla vs. the Sea Monster, an artist, a comic book artist, a manga artist from Godzilla vs. Gigan, a toy maker in Godzilla vs. Megalon, an archaeologist 
and Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla. These are ordinary people thrown into extraordinary situations. All of his films, even his ones that branch outside of tokusatsu, have these kind of elements to them, with an exception of The Secret of Teleji and Man. A lot of tokusatsu movies in this, especially from Ishiro Honda and Jun Fukuda, had really great roles for women as well. They weren't just sort of damsels in distresses, though they certainly made those. A lot of these women characters stood out on their own and sometimes would either be the moral center of the movies, like with Honda, or the physical center of the movie, like with Jun Fukuda. Most of these Godzilla, specifically Godzilla movies of this era, had that main, big, you know, strong female character. Jun Fukuda movies, he often had the female human characters physically stronger than most of their male counterparts. You have Kumi Mizuno's character in The Sea Monster, you have Saiko in Son of Godzilla, and you have the karate chick, I don't even know her name, but <laughs> she's the karate chick from Godzilla vs. Gigant. And in Godzilla vs. Megalon, oh yeah. <coughs> This is a contrast to Ishiro Honda, which Ishiro Honda very much so had his female characters be intellectual, the moral centers of the movies. Now, the thing that's interesting about Jun Fukuda, and it's really kind of sad if you read about it, but at the same time it is very interesting and speaks volumes to what kind of man he was. Jun Fukuda hated making tokusatsu movies, with the exception of Secret of the Legion Man, and that's because that was very early on in his career. He preferred making dramas and comedies, and it shows because his movies um, with Akira Takarada have a lot more fire to them. They, they, they just do. They have a lot more fire to them than his tokusatsu movies do. But yet, despite the fact that he preferred making these dramas and comedies, he still made these tokusatsu films. Yes, it was for a paycheck. I don't really care as long as I have fun watching the final product of the movie, and he excelled at that. An interview with him, which I can't remember where it was, but it shows just how apathetic he was towards his tokusatsu films in general. Again, with the exception of The Secret of the Telegian Man. He actually stated that he never watched any of his Godzilla movies. He never did. He actually brushed them off to work on other things. He never watched the final cuts of the film, so he worked on the editing, he never went to theaters to a premiere or anything like that, he never watched them. Sadama Sarikawa, who was the special effects director he primarily worked with in both Son of Godzilla and uh, Godzilla vs. the Sea Monster, Sadama Sarikawa said that he loved working with Jun Fukuda, and that the man was always laughing and joking on set, despite not wanting to make these movies. Because of this, Jun Fukuda, in many ways, is a giant inspiration to me, on a personal level. This was a man who loved making films, even if they were not what he wanted to make. He just loved making movies. It's very similar to Ishiro Honda, but on a more extreme level, where Ishiro Honda would always find something, you know, to try to harp on to make something good, or, or try to harp on something. Jun Fukuda just did not want to make these movies. He still made them because he was a businessman. He knew that you needed to make ends meet. But yet, at the same time, he still made them extremely good. With Ashiro Honda, some of the movies, like King Kong Escapes, for example, movies that he did not want to make, were kind of lackluster as a result. Jun Fukuda, even Godzilla vs. Megalon, a movie he detested, was a load of fun. I don't care what people say. I have a blast watching that piece of shit of a movie. He was a man who had almost nothing in the 1970s series as well. Hardly any budgets at all, and had to be unbelievably creative to make these giant monster movies look as good as they possibly could. An example of this is in Godzilla vs. Gigan and Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla. They're basically textbook ways of making a movie on a minuscule budget. Godzilla vs. Gigan, in my opinion, is one of, if not the best shot Godzilla movie ever made. It's not the best Godzilla movie ever made, far from it, but in terms of cinematography, the best. His films were textbook ways of making, especially in the 70s, of making a low-budget film look larger than what it really was. Like many of the people that came before him, they basically became creators from their own poverty, and I admire that ridiculously, and it's such an inspiration for me on a deeply personal level, because I deal with that all the time. Which Way They Walk had a $400 budget. My new big film, that I'm making that I won't release any details on it, right now has a budget of $800, and I'm still raising money for that. I have nothing, but yet I'm trying to do what I can with what I have, which isn't very much. Jun Fukuda very much so works in the same way. I look towards people like Jun Fukuda on how he worked, and how he studied these sort of films, or how he made these sort of films to inspire me to keep going. And I know Jun Fukuda isn't exactly the 
epitome of uh, an artiste, I guess, as snobs would put it in the film industry. He made some great, fun movies. Movies that I will come back to over and over and over and over and over again and still have the same level of fun as I did the first time I watched them as a child. And you have to admire that. You absolutely have to admire that. Here was a man who just loved making movies in general. Here was a man that just wanted to go out there with a movie camera and make something, even if he didn't really like it. And he still made them. He still put his energy into the movies. He still had his fire that he put in them. He, he, he still had this sort of energy to all of his films. I haven't seen one of Jun Fukuda's movies, maybe with the exception of War in Space, that didn't have this sort of underlying fire to them. And by fire, I mean this sort of energy that just keeps driving the movies along, uh, scene after scene after scene, be it the charisma of certain characters, in which Jun Fukuda was very good with that. He was very good at, at pulling these sort of crazy, wacky performances out of these actors, uh, especially in like Godzilla vs. the Sea Monster. Quite frankly, I think the human cast in Godzilla vs. the Sea Monster is what saves that movie for me. It's not... Godzilla. It's the human cast of that film. The same with uh, Son of Godzilla in many ways, so Godzilla's character is unbelievably good in that film. The human characters are what drive that movie. Mechagodzilla especially. Mechagodzilla, there's only monsters in it for two parts of the film. 85% of Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla is nothing but human drama. It's silly human drama and really kick-ass silly human drama but it's still human drama. There's hardly any monsters in it. It's the humans that keep driving that movie and make me want to keep coming back to that movie. Megalon is an exception. Megalon, I watch for the monsters. I don't watch for the humans. <laughs> but even War in Space, one of his lackluster movies, it's fun because of how bad it is and how campy it is. And Jun Fukuda knew that and played it up ridiculously. Uh, and he just pulled it out of the actors. And you can even tell that some of the actors were having fun you know, with the film, even though Jun Fukuda himself wasn't really having fun, he was able to pull out these great performances, and I really freaking admire that. I have to admire that so much. Believe it or not, it's not Ishiro Honda, or Eiji Tsuburaya, or Akira Fukube, or any of Tomiyuki Tanaka, or any of these people, an actor that really got me into Godzilla. It was truly Jun Fukuda that made, that made me just fall in love with this man in a giant lizard suit. It was the Fukuda films that I always watched on the Sci-Fi channel before I turned to the Sifi channel. It was always those films, his films, the Fukuda films, that always played on Godzilla movie marathons. Gigan, Mechagodzilla, Megalon, Sea Monster on AMC would always play. Uh, those kind of films I would always watch on Sci-Fi or AMC, and it was always his films I would be returning to over and over and over again. Even before I knew who Jun Fukuda was, when I was just a really young tyke and didn't even know what a director was. More than the Ishiro Honda films, or what I would learn to be the Ishiro Honda films, and you know why? And that's because I was having more fun with the Jun Fukuda movies. It was the Fukuda films that were always available on VHS at my local movie gallery. Movie gallery was a movie rental company that had a bunch of these Godzilla VHSs, these old, really old Godzilla VHSs, and it was all of his movies that were on those VHSs, with the, with the exception of Ghidra the Three-Headed Monster, in which I used to watch a lot with, and that was an Ishiro Honda film, but Son of Godzilla, Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla, uh, and Megalon were the three that were there, and those were all Fukuda films that I would always rent every other week and watch them until the tapes eventually ran out. Yes, I did that, though we put it back anyways. It was his films that were on VHS that made me always come back to them and made me want to learn more about Godzilla. It was his movies I would always watch to make me feel good, and this is the important one. This is the really, really, really important one, and why Jun Fukuda truly is, truly is, the unsung hero, hero of Godzilla, period. It was Jun Fukuda's movies that I would always go to and still go to when I feel down. Now, it, it is well known, and I've said this many times, especially on my Congratulations in the Genesis retrospective show, that I really related to the character Shinji Ikari because Shinji had a very clear case of depression. I've been diagnosed with it. I literally have a chemical imbalance in my brain that has made me manic depressive. And there are times where I feel fucking terrible for no reason at all. My life can be amazing. And I will just feel like utter shit. 
And you know what I pop in when I feel like utter shit, specifically on those kind of days, when I had, there's no reason why I feel bad, but I do? I pop in a Jun Fukuda Godzilla movie. And that's why I love the man so much. It's not in a Shiro Honda film I'll pop in, though once in a while, granted, I will do that. But it's Jun Fukuda that always makes me happy. It's his films that always put a smile on my face, even when I feel like like I'm less than garbage. Specifically, Son of Godzilla. And, and I hate to get unbelievably personal here, but this really, it means so much to me. It, it truly does. And, it, and I feel so bad because Jun Fukuda certainly gets overshadowed, sometimes rightfully so, by Ishiro Honda. And Jun Fukuda really needs to, I, he needs just as much praise as Ishiro Honda for making Godzilla. Jun Fukuda's film, Son of Godzilla, in particular, is literally my go-to movie when I feel down. When I have, when, when there's absolutely no reason to feel down, and I just do, and I just want to curl up and cry, and cry and cry and cry. And there are several times when that happens, I will literally pop in Son of Godzilla. Because Son of Godzilla just makes me feel so good inside. I laugh, I'm smiling throughout the entire thing, the music is catchy by Masaru Sato, Godzilla's character is so good. That ending, oh man, it, it really does almost bring a tear to my eye. I love that ending with Godzilla hugging his son in the snow. Uh, if you really want to know my opinion on that particular scene, watch the very first episode, even before the Godzilla vlogs was a thing. It's the very first episode in the playlist uh, where I go over the character of Showa era Godzilla. Human characters are just fun. The movie is just an upbeat romp, and it makes me feel better. Even when I feel like utter shit, that movie manages, just puts a smile on my face. And it reminds me that, one, I have something to live for, you know, so that, you know, life isn't all that bad. It reminds me that life isn't all that bad. But it also reminds me, Adam just have some fun once in a while. All of his Godzilla films do that. Even Megalon reminds me, Adam, just have some fun once in a while. Stop making these really dark films or stop watching these overly dark films or reading these overly dark books or, or just dark things in general, and just have fun. There's so much fun to be had in life. And yes, Jun Fukuda taught me that, or keeps teaching me that. And I know that's really, some people will consider that kind of overly dramatic, but I don't care. I don't care. Jun Fukuda keeps reminding me time and time again to have fun with my life. And a part of that is because, specifically in Son of Godzilla, but all of Jun Fukuda's movies have such an innocent heart and soul to them. Such this innocence to them. Yes, they, some of them are meant for kids, but even to adults. They have such a heart and soul, innocent heart and soul, that only a Fukuda, move, a Fukuda film could have. Ishiro Honda was very, you know, though optimistic, his movies tended to be really dark, mainly because him working with Takashi Kimura, who is the opposite of somebody who wants to have fun. Takashi Kimura, quite frankly, was an extremely pessimistic, dark, dark individual who had no outlook in life. Jun Fukuda was the opposite of that. His films were always the opposite of that. There was so much fun, and they just put a smile. I can't say that enough. They just put a smile on my face, and all of them in the end just make me feel good. Fukuda films. His Godzilla films. Fukuda's Godzilla films just make me feel good. Even, even Megalon. As horrible as that movie is, even Megalon makes me happy. It makes me smile. It allows me to have a fun time even when everything looks terrible. And it is for these reasons I believe that Jun Fukuda truly is the unsung hero of Godzilla. So go on Facebook and like AN Productions for all up-to-date information about what we're doing and future film shoots we are doing. Go on, hit the subscribe button, leave a comment stating your opinions on Jun Fukuda, whether or not you hate him or love him as much as I do. Um, stay tuned for uh, more updates on the Godzilla Saga. And speaking of the Godzilla Saga, like that on Facebook. And if you wish, join Geeks for Geeks, which is a small group that I am he the head of and which we all just have awesome conversation about anything geeky, anything geeky, and if you have anything to promote there that you'd like to make or that you'd like to discuss, you are more than welcome in that group. And in the end, this is Adam Noyce of Ann Productions saying, watch a Jun Fukuda Godzilla movie.